Bilia Divya, Cultivation, Economics and Marketing Opportunities in India. So before getting into the details of Milia Dibya, I want to spend a minute on to understand what is uh, like uh, what is agroforestry, then what is its importance, then we'll get into Milia Dibya. Yeah, so what is agroforestry? So some of you might be knowing about what is what it is. Uh, let me explain. Uh, agroforestry is a collective term used for land use systems in which woody perennials are grown in association with herbaceous plants or livestock in a spatial or rotation or both. So in a very simple terms, I would like to explain this. It is simple, simply a combination of tree and crop. Tree means it, it is a forest tree or horticulture tree species also may be possible. Then crop means all kinds of agricultural crops, maybe cereals, pulses, oil seeds, or grasses, whatever it may be. At the same time, agroforestry also includes animal component. So it is a simple combination of tree, that is woody perennial, plus agricultural crops, and our animal. Animal is not must here, but wherever pasture component is included, animal is also included. So that's why it is a combination of tree plus crop and our animal as shown in the figure. So in the figure, it is shown Milia Dubia based Silvi pastoral system. The tall growing tree is Milia Dubia. And underneath, the, we can see the grass species. And then two uh, uh, photographs are showing milch animals and sheep. So this is a simple combination of tree, crop, and our animal. Then... Uh, According to Dhani et al. 2009, there are 20 common agroforestry systems that are practiced in India. But out of these 20 practices, there are six kinds of agroforestry systems which are very much prevalent across the world. So first one is agri-silviculture. Agri means crops, silviculture means trees. So it is a combination of tree and crop. Then sixth one you can see agri-horticulture. It is a combination of crop plus fruit tree. Then agri silvi horticulture. It is a combination of agricultural crops. Then woody perennial, that is tree. Then horticulture, fruit tree species. Then seven, eighth one, agri silviculture. It includes crops and also woody perennial like trees. If it is pasture means animal also is included. Then horti pasture, that is 10th one in the num serial number. Fruit trees plus pasture and animals. Then 12th one you can see silvi pasture. That means woody perennial tree will be there plus pastures. Wherever pasture is there, animal component is also will be there. So out of the 20, these are the six most important uh, common agroforestry systems prevalent in the world as well as in India also. Then why we are uh, giving a lot of importance to agroforestry these days? Agroforestry is gaining importance because it is providing food security. That is because it includes agricultural crops also and some of the horticultural, horticultural tree species and silvicultural tree species. So it provides food security. And at the same time, it also provides nutritional security because the different systems of agroforestry can provide a lot of nutrients. That's why it is providing nutritional security. Then third most important thing is wood security. Agroforestry systems includes woody perennials like teak, malabar neem, then eucalyptus, uh, mahogany, so many other tree species. That means we can get the wood and timber from those tree species. So that's why we say food security, nutritional security, and wood security. Then what are the what is the importance of agroforestry? In what way it is able to uh, provide all these things, food security, nutrition security, wood security means you can see in the uh, figure F6 plus, that means agroforestry can supply food, fruit, fodder, fiber, firewood or fuel wood, then fertilizer. Fertilizer means if nitrogen fixing tree is there, 
or if there is a leaf fall or the cutting of the small, small branches, all of them will enrich the soil fertility. Thereby, it can add natural fertilizer to the soil. That's why it is called fertilizer. So these are the six functions, main functions of agroforestry. And besides that, it also provides a lot of services like soil erosion control, water conservation and improving the quality of water and soil, improving the soil fertility, carbon sequestration means whatever the carbon dioxide which is present in the atmosphere, it is getting absorbed by the tree species and it is stored in the soil as well as in the woody biomass. Then wind control, when it is planted all along the crop, uh, all along the bund in, in a given agricultural field, it provides uh, security, it provides protection from the heavy winds coming onto the crops. Otherwise, the agricultural crop productivity will be reduced. Then wind control, biodiversity, agroforestry agro -forest will include a lot of components. So tree, crop, livestock, pastures. Uh, so uh, naturally, it provides habitat for many uh, animals, microorganisms, birds. So naturally, it provides biodiversity. Then microclimate amelioration, the temperature is somewhat lesser in the agroforestry systems compared to the open agriculture fields. That's why it, it is able to ameliorate or uh, alter the microclimate within the <clears throat> system. Then it provides a lot of ecosystem services like oxygen release, carbon dioxide absorption, erosion control, purification of the oxygen, water quality improvement, like that it provides so many ecosystem services. And it also addresses 12 out of 17 sustainable development goals. That means these are the sustainable development goals which are approved by uh, members, member nations of United Nations Organization for well-being of the world, well-being of the people. <clears throat> so there are 17 sustainable development goals. <clears throat> Out of that, it will address 12 sustainable development goals. Then coming to the other non-timber forest produce like medicines, biofuels, TBOs, means tree-born oil seeds, like Pongamia is providing currant oil, neem is providing neem oil. So like that, tree-born oil crops, then gums and resins also are provided by the agroforestry. So this, these three slides speak about what is agroforestry, what is the importance of agroforestry. And now we are jumping into our main topic, Milia Dubia. Milia Dubia is one of the very, very important agroforestry tree species adopted across the country. So now we'll see all the uh, important aspects about Milia Dubia cultivation. So first one is scientific name is Milia Dubia. And this is also uh, alternately called as Malabar Neem, Maha Neem, Gora Neem or Burma Dek. Then Milia Dubia is originated or it is native to South, Southern Asia. From there, it has been spread to other continents in the world. Then Milia Dubia is belonging to the family Miliaceae. So Miliaceae is an important family in which Neem, our Ajadrakta Indica is also there. You know very well about Neem. Wherever it, you go in the villages, towns, Neem is very much widespread across the world. So it, a Milia Dubia also belongs to Milia family. So though, though there are uh, many species under Milia family, now we have under Milia Dubia or Milia species, four important species are there under Milia. Milia Ajadrek, Milia Composita, Milia Dubia and Milia Olkenski. So these are the important species that we have under Milia Milia. Miliaceae or Milia species. Now, why we need to talk about uh, Milia, uh, Milia Dubia nowadays, why it is gain, gaining a lot of importance and why there is increasing demand for Milia Dubia. There are numerous reasons why it is gaining importance and it is getting a lot of demand. So before getting into these reasons, I would like to tell you about teak. Uh, just uh, one or two sentences. You know very well, teak is called teak timber is called king of the timbers. Teak takes more than 20 to 30 years. That is gestation period is more than 20 years for getting good quality timber. So first thing is we cannot wait till that time because the demand is increasing in the country. Second aspect is, second aspect is government of India 
has put ban on drawing the wood and timber from the forest areas. So nobody can touch without the permission of the government or the forest department the uh, timber from the uh, forest areas. This is one important problem. Another important problem is another side of the coin is that only 30% of the demand is met from within the uh, domestic sources, but 60 to 70% of the uh, wood or timber is drawn from other countries. That means we are importing. That is a huge burden on the government. That's why government policymakers, scientists are searching for alternative to teak timber. So then people found that Miliadivia is an important alternative tree species. So now we'll see what are the positive points of Miliadivia. First thing is it is indigenous and economically important tree species. Second issue is it has short gestation period of six to seven years, and it is fast growing multi-purpose tree with soft and durable wood having 80% of the teak properties. I was telling that teak wood has more than 20 years of gestation period. That means if you want to cut the teak, mean you need to wait for more than 20 years. But Miliadivya can be harvested within seven years time. So that's why it is a very good alternative timber nowadays. Then another important thing is 80% teak property, properties are also possessed by the Miliadivya wood also. Then second, another important point is ease of working is almost more or less similar to that of teak. That means power requirement is same. Then overall performance is higher than the teak. Then working quality index of Miliadivya is just, is just more than the teak. These are the very important characteristic features of Miliadivya. That's why it is gaining importance. Another important point is Miliadivya can also be used as a fuel wood and it is rated as a good fuel wood because it has calorific value of more than 5 kilocalories. Then the most important uh, issue uh, for Milia Dubia, the most important advantage with the Milia Dubia is it has so many uses. For example, it is a potential raw material for pulp and paper industry, then for pencil making industry, and the plywood industry. The plywood industry is the most important industry nowadays because a lot of demand for the plywood, in the construction work. Then Miliadivya can also be used for matchstick industry and also pole industries. Then besides that, there are several uses like packing cages, cigar boxes, agricultural implements, construction materials, music instruments, like that so many other uses are also there depending on the age of the tree. Then of late, the scientists could find that Miliadivya has some uses with regard to medicinal, pharmacological, ethnomedicinal, and conventional properties. So they are used for medical purposes also. Then of late, some of the scientists from all over the world, they could identify Miliadivya is also useful for biorefinery research. So these are the important uh, importance of the uh, Miliadivya. That's why it is highly adopted in most of the southern states and to some extent in central and north Indian states also. So that's why scientists and policy makers are thinking and projecting that Milia Dubia can achieve the targets in national forest policy in 1988 and national agroforestry policy 2014. So based on all these reasons and importance of Milia Dubia, so now we have Milia Dubia as the important flagship program of agroforestry scheme under ICR India. Now, we will go to other details of Miliadivya, where it is distributed in the country or other parts of the world. So, it is endemic to Western Ghats <clears throat> and it is also found in tropical moist and tropical dry deciduous forests. And at the same time, in other countries like Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Bhutan, Myanmar, Australia, Africa, also it is found, including India. And in India, so many other states are there where it could be found. Then, coming to the botany of the uh, Miliadivya, you can see the right side figure, so the how the how tall the uh, tree is. The tree has the capacity to grow taller, that is 20 to 25 meters, and with the girth of 120 to 150 centimeter. Uh, bowl height is almost 10 to 12 meters. 
and uh, you can see this bark in the initial stages of the tree growth uh, the stem is almost uh, bark is almost greenish but when it matures the, it becomes dark brown as you can see the right side figure of milia divya that is from our own experiment in agroforestry scheme in hyderabad then coming to the ecological requirements that is nothing but climate and soil though literature says that it performs well in moist regions with annual rainfall exceeding 1000 mm but you know our experience show that it comes up well even in the areas of more than 600 mm rainfall also but only thing is if there is poor rainfall uh, condition then we may have to provide some irrigation in the especially in the off season that is after post monsoon season then optimum temperature is 30 to 35 degrees centigrade and it has the capacity to tolerate 45 degree centigrade also and minimum of 0 degree centigrade also but under north indian conditions we are facing some problem with milia divya especially under extreme temperature conditions that is more than 45 and uh, and also a minimum temperature below 0 degree centigrade which i will be showing some of the slides in the coming time then it also needs moderate light and moderate shade so that it can be grown under teak casuarina nutmeg and coconut underneath also then milia divya has the capacity to tolerate the frost but extreme frost is not good because ex under extreme frost condition frost conditions uh, milia divya is subjected to death then another important issue that is soil requirement milia divya can be grown on wide ranging soil types that is starting from light textured soils of red red loam alluvial then heavy textured soils of black loam soils also but with ph ranging from 5.5 to 7.5 and it requires soil depth of 1.5 meters because uh, if the soil depth is very shallow it may be subjected to lodging because of heavy winds or heavy other extreme calamities and it can be grown in poor soils and wastelands also because you know if the soil is fertile and it is good no farmer is ready to forego because farmers will go for agricultural crops for getting regular income but milia divya can be grown in poor soils and wastelands also that means uh, the farmers uh, who are not growing uh, anything on poor soils and wastelands can be diverted can divert that land to milia divya and uh, vasudev et al has done some research on Uh, soil type suitability to milia divya though they found that the overall growth and yield was high in black soils but the rate of increment was higher in uh, red soil compared to the black soil so overall i would like to say that with regard to the soil it can be grown on any type of soil but the most preferred soil is red soil or it is also called as light textured soil uh, because milia divya cannot tolerate the water logging it may tolerate the drought but it cannot tolerate the water logging there are several issues are coming up in other states where water logging is the problem where high temperature or low temperature are the problems then coming to the nursery techniques madam is everything okay hello rajini madam is everything okay so next one is nursery techniques milia dubia no, i'm is... sorry it's all all okay ah okay madam right so milia dubia is mainly propagated through seeds and vegetatively also the first one is we'll see the seeds so when you want to go for seed sowing so what you have to do first what we have to do middle aged trees we have to select having clear and straight bole from middle aged tree we have to collect the fruits and that too we have to select very good growing healthy tree species having clear and straight bole so from those tree species we have to collect the fruits uh, that fruits have to be collected during january to march only not beyond that not before that or beyond that but the issue here is if you want to directly sow the seeds of milia dubia from the seeds then the germination percentage is very low that is 5 to 25% because the 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 seed has 
hard endocarp which cannot be broken immediately or easily. So the germination is very low. Then in that case, what we have to do? Germination can be improved up to 40 to 45 or 50 to 60 percent by doing two kinds of treatments. One treatment is soaking in uh, gibberellic acid solution for 12 hours. So we can improve the germination up to 45 percent. Or another very easy method of uh, like a farmer friendly method is soaking the seeds in cow dung slurry for 24 hours. It will give germination of 50 to 60 percent. So cow dung slurry is available in every village with the farmer. So it is more farmer friendly technique. Then the seeds are sown in rice beds and irrigated regularly. So once the seeds are sown after giving the seed treatment, like cow dung slurry or GA3, then when you sow in the raised buds and uh, raised beds and irrigate regularly, it will germinate after 30 days. The germination may continue up to 70 days also. So the period is 30 to 70 days after sowing. Then you have to grow the seedlings up to 12 months. So 6 to 12 months old seedlings are generally preferred for planting in the main field. So this is not in nutshell about the seed sowing or getting the seedlings from the seed. The second technique is uh, like vegetative propagation. Nowadays, we are talking about mini clonal technology or technique. This mini clonal technique is very much developed by Forest College and Research Institute, Metropolitan in under Tamil Nadu Agriculture University and Institute of Forest Genetics and Tree Breeding, Coimbatore, and ICR, Central Agroforest Research Institute, Jansi. Uh, mm -hmm. These three institutes have developed mini clonal technology for propagation of milia dubia. I, I'll show you some uh, flow chart for this mini to understand in a better way the mini clonal technology. This is the photograph, just so you can have a glance on this. And I'll show you the uh, this one is the flow chart. You can see first is seed propagation, which you have just finished. Second one is clonal mother hedge garden, you can say. Here, superior clonal plants are planted in the mother hedge garden. Then these clonal plants are how to be planted either in the sunken bed or sand bed. So uh, in the sunken bed, how to plant them? We have to give a spacing of 10 centimeter into 10 centimeter or 15 centimeter into 10 centimeter. That means first value shows the uh, row to row, second value shows the plant to plant. So almost it is 10 by 10, 15 by 10 is close planting only. It is done in the sand bed, which is very much available in all the villages. Then we have to give some kind of fertigation by using the drip lines. Then uh, after 30 days after planting, then you have to prune it once in 15 days so that you will get the cuttings as shown in the previous figure. Then these apical cuttings have to be treated with 2% carbonism. Then that is useful for apical growth or uh, to avoid the fungal growth. Then basal portion of the cutting will have to give roots. So to promote the root system, we have to treat the basal portion of the cutting with IBA solution, that is indole butric acid solution. Uh, which is at the rate of 1000 to 2000 ppm. Then it is plant, It is to be planted in 90 cubic centimeter root containers in the sand or coir pit. And it has to be controlled under controlled environment with the temperature 30 to 35 degrees centigrade, relative humidity of 80%. And we have to keep them in mist chamber, misting at every 20 to 30 minutes. So that uh, once it is planted in the root containers, the root initiation will take place at 15 to 20 days after planting. Then after 30 to 35 days, root container has to be shifted to hardening chamber where 50 to 70 percent shade will be there for about 15 to 20 days. And now it has to be transferred to the open nursery so that plants have to be irrigated regularly. And by using the drip system, we have to provide the fertigation also like uh, triple 19 at the rate of five to seven grams per plant. So this is the flow chart showing the protocol of the seed and clonal propagation. You can see the uh, 
figure how it is there and i can also show you some of some more figures yeah so you can see figure 2 milia dibia mother hedge garden in nursery with the drip then uh, under field conditions how once it is transferred to the open field condition how it is looking like on the uh, right side mm -hmm. on the top that is somewhat well grown tree species mm -hmm. then coming to the planting see when you go for planting we we need to adopt some kind of spacing between the trees and between the rows so what kind of uh, spacing has to be adopted so the spacing depends on the type of soil in which we are growing the uh, milia divya and uh, utility of the wood for what we are growing milia divya, the purpose of growing milia divya then intercropping what kind of intercrops we are growing whether it is cotton maize are we going for intercropping or uh, bund planting or block planting or solo planting like that and what kind of resources you have whether it is irrigated or rain fed so based on all these uh, important aspects we will decide the spacing in general for agroforestry 3 by uh, sorry 5 5 into 4 with 500 trees per hectare 5 meters into 5 meters with 400 trees per hectare 6 into 6 meters 277 trees per hectare 8 into 2 meters 625 trees per hectare so optimum is 5 into 5 meters and ideal is 8 meters by 2 meters so either of the way we can go but if the soil is too poor we can go for by for 5 into 5 or 5 into 4 also then if it is for block plantation we have to reduce the spacing between the rows and trees that is 3 by 3 meters or 2.5 to 2.5 meters that means in the case of block plantation you cannot go for intercropping because the the spacing is very close but 3 by 3 2.5 to 2.5 you will get more number of trees per hectare then bound bund and boundary plantation generally for bund and boundary plantation in telangana eucalyptus is uh, very much grown or even teak also is very much grown in our Badra Chalam area where ITC factory is there. But of late, scientists are recommending the bund or boundary planting of milia dhrivi also by maintaining 2 meters spacing or 4 meters spacing. When we maintain 2 meter between the trees, we can get the two, 200 trees per hectare. 4 meters means that we can, can get 100 trees per hectare. And if you want to go for zigzag planting, you'll get more plants per hectare. Then short rotation for a biomass, 1.5 to 1.5. This is called high density planting. That is 4,500 trees you'll get. So this is only for biomass or we can say uh, the paper or pulp wood industry prefers this kind of uh, short rotation for biomass. So these are the different kinds of tree spacings. Then coming to the planting, how planting has to be done. Once the nursery is ready, so what we can do, we can have a digging of the pits with uh, dimensions of 45 centimeter cube or 60 centimeter cube in the months of April and May, that is summer. So once the, the pits are dug, you can see on the right side field, the pits are dug. Uh, so it has to be left to the sun for about one or two weeks. Uh, so that uh, if there are any weeds or uh, harmful microorganisms, they will die. Then uh, we have to fill the pits with uh, some of the nutrients and also uh, fungicides. Like for example, 3 to 5 kg FIM, 100 to 150 grams of neem cake powder and 50 grams of DAP per pit. In case in some of the areas, FIM, farmyard manure is not available then you can say that farmyard manure can be replaced with 2 kg vermicompost also or even poultry manure also can be used. But uh, most appropriate and uh, most important thing is farmyard manure. So besides farmyard manure, neem cake and DAP can also be put into pits. So that will take care of the uh, nutritional needs of the newly planted seedling. Then what is the cost of seed? You can see what are the how the seedlings are looking like. So these kind of seedlings are required for planting. And the cost of seedling is uh, 10 to 15 rupees per seedling in government nurseries. And if it is private nurseries, it is ranging from 80 to 200 rupees per seedling. But uh, the government recently, the there is a hike in the 
uh, cost of seedling up to 35 rupees per seedling also in government nurseries. Then pruning and thinning, that means now we have completed uh, the planting operation. So once the planting is done, we have to carry out the regular weeding, weeding, then irrigation and fertilizer application every year. There is no doubt we'll be looking into those details also. But before that, uh, the management aspects like pruning and thinning. So pruning is generally done when the tree reaches two to three meters height. Till then, we don't need to go for pruning because we do not get any side branches. When we get to two to three meters of tree height, then we may get some uh, side branches. Some of the side branches may die. Some of the trees, uh, nursery plants uh, planted in the main field also may die. So in that case, what you have to do, they start pruning of the side branches only when tree gets height of two to three meters. And it is very important, pr pruning is very important so that we can get the a very straight, clear and not free, high quality bowls. Otherwise, what will happen? So many problems will come and it is not preferred by the plywood industry. Then at the same time, when the tree grows taller, you will get some of the side branches. So those side branches have to be cut. Otherwise, what will happen? The lot of shade will be there for underneath the uh, intercrops. At the same time, tree also will not grow taller. Then we don't get uh, required biomass. Then thinning, when you go for high density planting of milia vivia, like uh, 1.5 into 1.5 or 3 into 3, 2.5 into 2.5, you will get lot of trees per hectare. So when uh, uh, at the when it grows, like second year, fourth year, sixth year, eighth year, every alternate year you have to go for thinning of the trees. Thinning has to be done only when a particular tree is died are diseased or it is dying or malformed or crooked. So when it has some problem only, we have to go for thinning. Otherwise, it is of not required. And it, that high density planting is mainly meant for biomass. But if the tree is having some problem, like disease, dying, malformed, crooked, then we have to go for thinning operation. Then, uh, so uh, what about uh, uh, the, how to grow the trees? regularly with irrigation and fertilizer application. So uh, in the initial stages, when you go for digging and pitting, regular watering is required uh, until it is fully established. Then so weekly watering is very must. Then fertilizer application has to be done once in three months for the first three years. So for first three years, it is very crucial because in the initial stages, some of the trees also will die. If we don't follow the regular weeding, regular weeding, watering, and fertilizer application. Then in the later stages, the uh, irrigation can be given at 10 to 15 days interval, especially in the post-monsoon season. That means in the rainy season, if there is adequate rainfall, you need not give irrigation. But in the post-monsoon season, you have to give irrigation at minimum of 10 to 15 days interval. Then under rain-fed conditions, if there is no rain, you can give flood irrigation or basin irrigation or drip irrigation also you can give. Those people who are having drip irrigation facility, they may also go for fertigation also with NPK mixture of 20 to 50 grams per tree up to two years. Then from third year onwards, 100 grams per tree also can be given through fertigation so that tree growth and biomass will be good. Then agroforestry systems, like uh, uh, Milia dubia is very much suitable for growing the intercrops. As I was telling that uh, uh, wherever intercropping is uh, needed, wherever farmers want to go for intercropping, you may go for spacing of five into five, five meters into five meters. So that uh, the vacant space between the trees and rows and you can utilize for growing the intercrops. Then why Milia dubia is suitable for agroforestry systems? Because it is the best indigenous tree species. When you say indigenous, it is very much adapted to local conditions. Then it is deciduous nature. That means from December to February, uh, it is having deciduous nature. A lot of leaf fall will be there so that the, the light will be coming onto the uh, intercrops. Then ability to withstand pruning. That means it, can, it has the capacity to withstand the pruning. That means even if you go for pruning also, it is not that much easy for the tree to die. So it will put forth further growth in terms of bowl height and all these things. 
and it is wider spacing. When you go for wider spacing of five to five meters, uh, naturally we can have the scope of growing the intercrops. <coughs> for example, <coughs> what are the suitable intercrops for South India? Say groundnut, chilies, turmeric, black gram, papaya, banana, watermelon, sugar, sugar cane. So these are the uh, crops that we can grow up to three three years time in the initial stages. Then if you come to North India, we can grow pulses, wheat, turmeric, barsim, and barley. And suitable intercrops in Tamil Nadu, say for first two years, you can grow for banana and papaya. Then up to fifth year, turmeric also can be grown. And some people say curry leaf, mulberry also can be grown as intercrop in Tamil Nadu. Then other uh, states like Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Gujarat, Karnataka, it is uh, recent days, what is happening, some of the tree growers are using Milia Dubia as a host, uh, secondary host tree for sandalwood plantations. In, For example, if you take Telangana, in the recent times, a lot of areas come up under sandalwood. So some people are preferring Goa, some people are preferring pomegranate, some people coconut, some people Milia Dubia. So like that, different people are preferring different tree species and Milia is one of the examples. As, in, as a host to species for sandalwood plantations. Then, uh, so you can see uh, asparagus racemosus cultivation under Milia dubia in Maharashtra, and Milia dubia as planted as a host for Indian soilwood in uh, sandalwood in Maharashtra. These are the two photographs. One is asparagus, second one is Milia dubia itself as a host plant for sandalwood plantation. Now, now we, I would like to tell you something about research progress in PZSU. So this is the plan that our, our Dr. Joseph, who is seen very much in the photograph right side, they have planned for intercrops also under Milia Dubia. And they have grown uh, two kinds of uh, species like uh, fodder maize and fodder jowar. You can see fodder maize very much in the, in the three years old Milia Dubia. So what they could find is uh, uh, if you apply 75% recommended dose of nitrogen through inorganic fertilizers, and 25% nitrogen through poultry manure, uh, it is almost equal to 100% uh, recommended dose of fertilizer in this silvi pastoral system. And it has given highest yield of 3.92 tons of uh, uh, green foliage of uh, uh, maize. At the same time, economic returns of more than 20,000 rupees per hectare. This is only from uh, fodder maize, not from the milia dube, because milia dube is sold after six to seven years. And from intercrops, you can get income of more than 20,000 rupees per hectare for one season. Then uh, coming to uh, the research which is going on, which is in progress at present in our agroforest research center in Hyderabad. So we are trying to test seven uh, fodder grasses, APBN1, guinea grass, CO4, CO5. You can see all the photographs in the slide. Then uh, Anjan grass, Marvel grass, multi-cut sorghum. And the last one is Sol Milia Dubia. So among all these seven grasses which we have been growing in the last two years, what we could find is, uh, you can see, uh, I'll show you. Yeah. You can see this is the overall picture of the Milia Dubia based silvi pastoral system. CO5, CO4, guinea grass, ABBN1, they are found to be profitable under Milia Dubia based silvi pastoral system. At the same time, some of the uh, grassy species like uh, onion grass, marvel grass, and multi-cut sorghum, they are not that much, uh, not giving that much returns compared to the, the CO5, CO4, guinea grass, other grasses. So you can also see another, some of the intercrops like uh, vetiver. Vetiver, you know very well, it is very good for soil erosion control. Then lemongrass, lemongrass oil, other oils can be extracted. Lemongrass tea also can be made. Then citronella oil also can be extracted. Citronella also, also can be grown. Then another one is aloe vera. Uh, it is also having a lot of medical uses. And re these days in the metropolitan cities, aloe vera juice is also available. So uh, basil is another uh, small uh, statured uh, crop which can be grown under Milia dubia. And coriander is coming up very well under Milia dubia shade. But only thing is we have to provide protection from the pea falls. Otherwise, pea falls are damaging the all these crops. And some of the sometimes uh, the aloe vera is also being uprooted by the pork pines. So we have to provide some kind of protection all around the field. So 
Uh, and uh, one more important point is carbon sequestration potential of milia dubia is not only higher, but also not adversely and significantly affected due to intercropping with fodders. That means, uh, uh, see, even if you grow intercrops also, the growth of the tree is very much increasing, but it is not affected because whenever we, we grow tree, whenever we go some intercrop in the milia dubia, what will happen? We go for regular weeding. We go for regular irrigation, we go for regular fertilization. So automatically, whatever the resources that we are providing to the grass, they are also being exploited with the milia dubia. So it is very much growing and it is highly profitable. Then coming to, these are the uh, photographs of our milia dubia based silvic pastoral system in our research farm. Recently, ICR, DDZ, ADZ, Director Caffrey, all of them, they have visited and monitored the trial. And during annual group meeting, many people have visited our research plots and they have visited and suggested. And one more important, now coming to the some of the problems in milia dubia cultivation. So to start with one abiotic stress, splitting of milia dubia bowl. What is this splitting of milia dubia bowl? See, when I say bowl has to be very clear without any fissures, no, uh, sentence without... is a mark. It is a hundred. So, milia dubia uh, should be should have clear bowl. Then only it is preferred by the paper and pulp industry, plywood industry, mastic industry, pole industry. But you see in the figures, what kind of splitting of stem is there in milia dubia? What are the reasons where it is happening? See, first of all, it is happening mostly in North Indian conditions where temperatures are extreme. For example, if you go to summer, it is having more than 45 degrees centigrade. Under these conditions, the splitting is happening. When the temperature goes below 0 degrees centigrade or very low temperature, also the splitting is happening. So there are several reasons like one is temperature. Second one is water logging or poor drainage content is there. Water logging is the problem. So that's why we have to select light textured soils only. So heavy texture soils with poor water drainage problem, then high temperature or low temperature are the main reasons. Then impact. So if that kind of splitting is there in milia dubia, then it is not useful for plywood industry or when you're making our paper and pulp industry, then it results in low market price because we have to sell it as fuel wood or firewood only local at local prices. So we'll get low, low income. So what is the remedy? Then growing light textured soils, regulate the temperature through mulching or regulating the irrigation, something like that, you have to do it. Otherwise, uh, splitting is a major problem in North Indian conditions. Then coming to the tree protection. So the splitting is like a like because of the abiotic stress. And now biotic stresses like uh, uh, pests and diseases. What are the pests and diseases that are affecting the quality of uh, milia dubia. In fact, if you say overall, we do not have much problem with regard to pests and diseases in milia dubia. But nevertheless, these are the pests and diseases reported across the world. But it is very rare. We do not have much problem. Now we are maintaining six-year-old milia dubia. So far, we do not get any that kind of problem. But anyhow, for knowledge's sake, we'll read about, we'll know about pests and diseases. So first one is red spider mite. So red spider mite causes a lot of uh, webbing underneath the leaves. So we have to go for application of 10% neem oil or 2.5 ml of dicopol per liter of water. Then giant looper. So it is having a uh, looper means it uh, uh, like it bores the stem and there will be loss of leaves and standard growth of the seedlings. And it also uh, host, it also is having alternate hosts like prosophis and neem. That means in the absence of milia dubia, it will uh, grow on prosophis and neem. So it occurs during May to November. So what we have to do, we have to install the light traps so that uh, uh, those adults will come and fall and die in the light traps. And in extreme cases, we can go for spraying of the dichlorovas, which can, which we can, with which we can control the gent looper, ascotis selenaria. And uh, we can also go for pruning or lopping of the alternate host tree species or some of the stems of milia dubia. Then thrips, as you know, thrips are very common in other cotton chilies like that. So it is a sucking pest. It will suck the sap from the leaves 
and tender stems. We have we can go for five percent neem seed kernel extract oil and neem oil also we can go, or we can go for spraying of dimethate, monocrotophos, imidacloprid like that. You can go for spraying of any uh, systemic insecticides, and you can see the diseases, leaf blight, the uh, decay of the leaf tip, then spots will be there, browning surrounded by pale yellow halo. Then infected leaves will crinkle and uh, distorted also. Uh, so the leaf fall will be more. The leaves are mostly affected. So in that case, you have to go for spraying of the copper oxychloride or carbendism or Bordax mixture will control the leaf blight. Then stem and twig blight. Is, so the stem or twig will be swollen with the, with the swollen bark. At the same time, there will be liquid oozing out of the bark also. So in that case, what will happen? The branches will turn yellow and shed, giving barren appearance. So you have to go for, then you uh, have to uh, prune the affected uh, species. Like pruning and thinning, what we have discussed, we have to prune the affected portions. If there is a death of the tree, death of the branch, we can cut it and throw it outside or burn it. Then we can also go for bodax mixture, pasting, what, what the rate of 1%. Then Ganoderma droplet, it is somewhat a dangerous uh, disease. Uh, so fruit bodies, that is basically a will be seen at the base of the tree. There will be swelling of the, at the base of the tree. So, so in case of water stress, one side mottling of the canopy also will happen. Then we can go for, uh, under these Ganoderma conditions, if you want to control it, we can go for drenching with the bavistin or copper oxychloride, or we can go for removal of the affected plants. And in some cases, you can also go for application of the trichoderma in the basins. So trichoderma, what it will do, it will promote the fungal growth and it, that fungi will uh, kill the root rot fungi. So these are the some of the photographs like the red spider mite, chlorosis on leaves due to mite feeding, then scales, then uh, ascotis selenaria that is uh, borer, then leaf miner, then you can see thrips, defoliators, then grubs, then uh, brooches and seed damage of brooches. So these are all the branch tip drying also it can be seen. So, uh, and you can see the uh, incidence of uh, pests and diseases uh, during different months, like low, medium, high. You can see red spider mite in the month of uh, January, it is low, March also low, but June, July, it is medium, then August to November, it is high. So based on this chart, we have to keep this chart in mind and we have to be, we have to take all the precautionary measures or at least curative measures you have to take to control the patient diseases so that you can have a clear and healthy goal of milia divya. And uh, what about uh, yield and economics? Yes, everything is said and done. But uh, finally, coming to the yield and marketing is also very important because at the end of seven years only, we'll get the tree uh, income from the tree. So there are several options for us. Suppose if a farmer is going for uh, biomass production, so only the tree can be kept in the field up to two to three years only. So tree density should be high density, that is more than 2,500 trees per hectare. Uh, when we get diameter of breast height, desirable diameter of breast height is 5 to 15 centimeter only. And uh, when you go for two to three years rotation, you can get 150 to 250 tons per hectare. And there is a market price of 3,000 to 3,500 rupees per ton. And the most important use is uh, plywood. So the rotation required is six to eight years. That means after uh, six years after planting only, we can go for harvesting. So the tree density desirable is uh, 200 to 500. And DBH required is 14 centimeter and above. And uh, we can sell it at the rate of 5,000 to 7,000 rupees per ton. And if it is for, for pulp industry, three to four years rotation is required and four to four to four thousand five hundred rupees per ton can be realized. But in case of uh, uh, in case of paper and pulp industry, for example, ITC, J, J, JK paper mill, all these people, uh, they prefer eucalyptus. But uh, along 60 to 70 percent of the pulp will contain the eucalyptus. But remaining 20 to 30 percent bulk will be from the eucalyptus, subabra, and all these things. So, you, Melia Dubia also is suitable for uh, paper and pulp industry, and it is mixed with the eucalyptus pulp. And if you want to go for timber purpose, like just like teak timber, 
take will take 20 to 30 years, but uh, here it will take only 10 years time. So uh, if you want to go for timber, it should, it should be like uh, less than 200 trees per hectare is required. That means number of trees is less. That means you have to go for more and more spacing. Then a desirable DPH is somewhat more, 35 centimeters and above. Uh, more is the uh, DBH, more is the timber quality. And you can see 350 to 500 rupees per cubic feet is the desirable price that is offered in the market. So the rotation period is three to 10 years, depending on the utility like biomass, plywood, pulp and timber. And it is highly suitable for industrial agroforestry as an alternative to do thick timber. And uh, these are the examples, for example, high density. Uh, when you go for high density, it is preferred by matchstick industry at the end of two years, paper and pulp industry at the end of three to four years. And if you go for high density, it can be suitable for matchstick, pulp and plywood industry. So likewise, uh, uh, the market price is preferred, market price is decided. And uh, we can see some of the agroforestry systems and uh, economics. So Miliadubia is a very promising agroforestry tree species, suitable for mixed plantation, block plantation, boundary plantation, with the biomass ranging from 80 to 250 tons per hectare in a span of four to eight years of planting. The under various systems, economic profitability seems to be 24,000 rupees to 137,500 rupees per acre in different parts of the country. So it depends on the age. It depends on the purpose for which we are growing media Divya. You can see a lot of research results also here. In case of uh, Karnataka, if it is for burnt plantation, so you are able to get 2,49,000 rupees per acre. If it is boundary plantation, 4,72,500 rupees per acre. If it is block planting, then we can go for, we can get 7,92,000 rupees per acre. The Tamil Nadu also like 6.8 lakhs to 21 lakhs. Andhra Pradesh, 2 lakhs. Gujarat, 1.5 lakhs more than that. And in Punjab also, so many other states. So we can, this is the possible income that we get as net income in different states, depending on the utility, depending on the age of the tree or depending on the diameter of the wood. Then uh, what are the success stories? We can say a lot of, lot many things uh, in research fields, but what about success stories? So for example, if you take the Maharashtra, a retired teacher has grown Milia Dubia uh, as a shade tree at five to five meters in dragon fruit on five acres. So the biomass that he has got is 259 kg per tree after four and a half acres, for four and a half years. Then he has sold at the rate of 6,700 rupees per ton to the plywood industry in Gujarat, plywood industry in Gujarat. So commercial bull biomass he has got 83 tons and gross income of 5.56 lakhs that farmer has got. So the cost of cultivation is around 1 lakh rupees. Uh, so or, yeah, sometimes if the depending on the labor and other things, maybe up to it may go up to 2 lakhs also. So if the 2 lakhs is the cost of cultivation, gross income is 5.5 lakhs, then a farmer will get more than 3 lakh rupees as a net income. Then one more uh, success story in Telangana. So the farmer name is Srinu. Uh, he belongs to a village Le Mamedi in Rangaredi district. He has grown Milia Divya in seven acres on clay loam soil. He was also growing some of the vegetables, guinea grass, aloe vera to meet the domestic needs only, but he did not sell any of the intercrop produce to outside, but he, he was to meet all these domestic needs or animal needs. So the system uh, was irrigated with the drip irrigation. So he got average girth of 60 to 90 centimeters and he has, uh, he has harvested after five years of planting. So he got 33 tons per acre as wood. Then he got uh, 10 lakhs 40,000 40, rupees as a gross returns from the seven acres. So in seven acres, if the cost of cultivation is around four to five lakhs, so he, he got around more than five lakh rupees as net income. So this is a success story from Telangana. Then another point is carbon monetization. So uh, whatever the tree species that we are growing, either mahogany, miliadubia, or whatever teak, whatever it may be, some of the companies are ready to go for carbon monetization. But 
uh, I am not sure that uh, uh, there are some success stories about carbon monetization, but we have to catch hold of some of the companies which are into carbon monetization so that they will offer for every one ton carbon credit, they will give $10 after four years after planting so that uh, it is a, a regular income from the farmer. Then conclusions, agroforestry plays a key role in carbon farming. That is, that's what it mitigates the climate change. And Miliadubia is the most important uh, agroforestry tree species as an alternative to the teak wood. And it is also providing food and wood security. Carbon monetization will further enhance the net farm income. And Miliadubia can reverse the land degradation, promote carbon sequestration. And standard and recommended package practices can help farmers to achieve higher diversification of the traditional cropping systems. And industrial required raw material can be made from the Milia dubia. But only thing is, any agroforestry tree species, whether it is a Milia dubia or teak or mahogany, it needs strong marketing and it should be traceable and trustworthy. So, farmer has to be very intelligent in making or linking with the industry so that he can get assured income or assured market from the Milia dubia plantations. So, if you want to get more information, you can call us at any time and uh, the more information can be get from. Uh, CAFRI Jansi, that is Central Agroforest Research Institute of Jansi, Forest College and Research Institute of Metropolitan, then Institute of Forest Genetics and Plant Breed, Tree Breeding in Coimbatore. These are the sources. And even you can write it to me also. My phone number and email ID are there. The first slide itself, I can project once again. And uh, this is, uh, thank you very much uh, for giving time. Okay. So, uh, okay, madam. Yeah, so actually it was supposed to be for 30 or 40 minutes right now we have uh yeah. we have reached almost one year one hour okay quickly i'll take up some questions yeah so some basic questions first what are the optimal cl climatic conditions for cultivating my daddy hmm. yes madam uh so Literature is selling that uh, more than 1000 mm rainfall areas are highly suitable for better growth of the Milia Divya. But uh, even under Hyderabad conditions where the annual rainfall is more than 650 mm also, we are able to get good growth. But only thing is we have to ensure good silvicultural practices like uh, tree spacing, then uh, application of fertilizers, irrigation, then removal of the weeds, then cutting of the side branches. We have to take care of all these issues so that even in less rainfall areas also we can get. But during off season, that is post monsoon season, only you have to give irrigation at a 10 to 15 days interval. Okay. And yeah. uh, how does Milia dubia compare to other tree species in terms of growth rate? Yeah. Uh, see, Milia dubia is a, I told already in the slides, it is a faster and multi-purpose tree species. That means, suppose if you take uh, mahogany, it will take more than 12 years for harvesting. If you take the teak, it will take more than 20 years for harvesting. But uh, Milia Dubai is not like that. It will take uh, six to seven years time for harvesting for plywood industry. If you want to use it for matchstick industry, only two years. If you want to use for paper and pulp industry, it is three to four years only. So it can be used for plywood industry. It can be used as a firewood. So multi-purpose tree species at, at a different age, age time, we can have uh, cutting for different industries. That is, that means it can meet the requirement of different industries at different age times. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. And uh, what are the primary pests and diseases affecting Melodivia and their management strategies? Yeah, so I explained uh, very in detail about uh, uh, Milia Divya uh, plant production. So among the abiotic stresses, especially in North India, stem splitting is the main problem. Uh, stem splitting comes especially in high temperature or low temperature conditions. So in heavy textured soils with uh, uh, high water capacity or water logging is the problem. So we have to select the light textured soils. We have to control the uh, irrigation and all these things. Temperature also has to be controlled that so that we can overcome the stem splitting problem. Then uh, biotic stresses like uh, red spider mites. 
I told that uh, we can go for spraying of the neem oil or application of the dicofar. Then some of the borers, you can have the light traps or go for spraying of the dichlor wash. In case of thrips, which is a sucking pest, you can go for uh, neem oil spray. And some of the diseases, we can simply go for spraying of the copper oxide chloride or carbendizum. So likewise, we can, uh, and at the same time, you, we have to uh, monitor the pests and diseases regularly because some of the pests are having low incidence in some months and some of the pests are having high incidence in few months. So we have to keep the pest calendar, which I have shown in the slide, in mind, the, thereby by close monitoring is required so that we can overcome the pest and disease problems. Otherwise, in Miliadubia, pest and diseases are not that much prevalent. Only thing is regular. Now and then monitoring is required. Otherwise, it is not an issue at all. Yes, next. Okay. And uh, can Miliadubia be intercropped inter inter with other crops? If so, what are the recommend recommend? The cropping options, recommended intercropping options. Yes, yes. So I have shown very clearly in the slide under South Indian conditions what intercrops can be grown. Under North Indian conditions, then Tamil Nadu, under all these conditions, what kind of trees uh, intercrops can be grown? I have shown very clearly. For example, if you take the South India, like groundnut, chilies, turmeric, cotton, maize, even pasture crops like. Uh, Guinea grass, APBN1, CO4, CO5 can be grown. Then if it is North India, you can go for wheat, pulses, turmeric also, and barsim barley also. Tamil Nadu, banana, papaya in the first two years. Then after that, uh, turmeric can be grown. Then in, in uh, southern Indian in conditions like Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, you can go uh, Miliadubia as a host plant for sandalwood. Again in Miliadubia, we can grow maize, like fodder maize or grain corn or sweet corn then cotton, red gram, then at the same time, we can also grow some of the grassy species. Okay. And what are the potential economic returns and payback periods associated with Miliadubia cultivation? So the economic returns, uh, I have shown one uh, table wherein in different states, how the economic returns are coming. So it, it, uh, net income starts from uh, more than 1.5 lakh to uh, even uh, 15 lakhs also, but it depends on the purpose for which we are growing Milia Divya. If it is biomass, if it is pulp wood, if it is plywood, it depends on the purpose for which uh, uh, we are growing Milia Divya. Based on that only, we will get the returns. At the same time, farmer has to be very intelligent in linking the plantation with the industry so that he will get assured income. Otherwise, assured market is a problem. In all places, it may not be successful. So, farmer has to have a link with the industry nearby. Okay. And what are the sustainable harvesting practices to ensure continuous yield and environmental conservation? See, uh, Madam, uh, see, the Miliadubia once planted, it can be cut only once. Either up to two years age for matchstick industry, either three or four years time uh, for paper and pulp industry, or more than seven years for plywood industry, more than 10 years for timber. So the only one cutting is possible at the different stages. Once planted, if you harvest once, then that's gone. Again, you have to replant it. Okay. Okay. And are there any specific certification schemes or quality standards for melodivia timber that farmers should be aware of? Yeah. So this is a very important question, actually. So if you want the, uh, especially for timber purpose, uh, more than one meter girth is required. So uh, the girth of the tree or diameter of the tree is very important. It requires more than one meter girth. If it is less than that, we can go for plywood industry or paper or pulp industry. But if you want to go for good timber as an alternate timber to tip, we need to wait for 10 years and we have to get more than 100 centimeter or 1 meter. Okay. Yes. And how can farmers access government subsidies or support programs for Meliodubia cultivation? Yes. Yeah, so subsidy details, you know, madam, that uh, uh, as such, there is no subsidy uh, in our state. But uh, uh, only, th I don't think some subsidy is there. Uh, 
but uh, farmers you know more number of farmers are to uh, come together and uh, grow the milia dibia so that sizable amount of uh, milia dibia wood is available and they can talk to particular industry so that they'll get uh, bargaining power and they'll get uh, more price but as such uh, if you want to subsidy i think uh, you have to have a tie up with the industry only because in some okay. areas where sizable uh, number of farmers are there the uh, what you call industry people may uh, give some uh, kind of uh, inputs or uh, seedlings like that and again they will go for buyback so wherever industry is there that is possible but not uh, all places okay now i'll take up the last question what are the emerging market trends or and opportunities for mele dubia products in the in the renewable energy sector yeah so uh, like uh, uh, for example if you take uh, milia dubia i already told that different purposes suppose renewable energy means like matchstick industry paper and pulp industry so that is possible at the same time uh, the tree residue Uh, which is like a small twigs branches if they are there instead of uh, burning them or throwing them these things can be used as a firewood or firewood at the same time if the sizable quantity is there that can be made into the briquettes those briquettes can be uh, sold to the industries who are uh, using the boilers so in that way we can get uh, some income from the tree residue also and okay. uh, there is uh, vasundhara green farms you can have the uh, i'm projecting the slide you can vasundhara green farms at gmail.com the phone number is also there they are responding to many questions online also okay yeah okay yeah. okay so before we end uh, mr joseph you would like to ask anything you are in mute okay 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 dr ranjelu i think uh, we have now come to end of question round on yep. behalf of agriculturalinformation.com we like to thank you for a very detailed presentation and answering all the questions in depth and we also like to thank all the participants for joining this meeting the meeting will now be closed i can see in, uh, mr joseph now unmuted yeah yeah, yeah. just a madam yeah. one just i want to tell you sure. since in, in case of a media do we are the cutting cycle is just for single when comparing to eucalyptus we will have a three cycles like that people are more preferring where the good buyback as well as the uh, good market is there so but in case of some bangalore that area media do we is having good actually good market in us but here okay. is only one single cycle and once you plant you have to cut and the life cycle is over whereas in case of yes. eucalyptus it is not like that we'll get first cycle third year second cycle sixth year and third cycle is after 10th year so like that uh, the profits will be more better but depending upon the climatic condition over there etc etc and buyback is also there in the executive so the farmer should actually before taking up the plantation they should get into uh, they should know completely thoroughly and uh, find out which exactly crop they have to take because the gestation period is more in case of a Uh, this uh, trees that is a very uh, disadvantage side so a farmer cannot wait for the uh, money for long time so in case of eucalyptus we get the money for third year for first third year itself first cycle we can uh, complete it we get money sixth year second cycle we will get and then the 10th year again third cycle we will get at recurring times we get money but in case of eucalyptus this ju milia dubia single time so but number of cycles uh, in a year it can be increased like that so this is the two okay. this is the difference between two of them uh, so okay, at the Mr. end Gaurav. i mm. uh, yeah. madam i i thank organizers for giving me an opportunity and before that i thank our professor and guru dr joseph for giving me this opportunity and for uh, recommending my name to your organization thank you thank you joseph yeah, sir you're most welcome thank, thank, thank you, you mr joseph yeah. thank, thank you, you madam thank you yeah. thank you okay we'll end the meeting now. thank you thank you madam Thank you.